think the future is going to be kinder and gentler than the present. Crinix is another medical procedure as far as I'm concerned. We keep the person in storage as long as necessary. I'm thinking that uh, within, you know, 50 to 100 years, people will start being recovered from this process. People will be rejuvenated to a youthful condition and any disease they have cured. These are people who say heaven can wait. They want a little bit more life here on earth before moving on to something else. I'm Ben Best, I'm 64 years old. I'm president and CEO of the Cranix Institute. Our membership is growing, it's growing steadily. We have 95 people who are currently in storage. We're classified as a cemetery, but I'd like to think of this as being more like a hospital, caring for patients, as we call them patients, who are metabolically challenged. We offer storage of tissue, DNA, storage of pets. This is our pet cooling box. We have 64 uh, pets, almost all of them are cats and dogs. This is the human cooling box, same basic principle, except it's a lot larger. When we get patients, the point is to cool down as quickly as possible after pronouncement of death. Do chest compressions to keep the circulation going. In the funeral home, the funeral director does surgery and trying to clean out any blood or sedimentation that's in the blood vessels. We try to put antifreeze solution into the body water. And then they're brought over here to our facility. That's when they go into the cooling box, which cools them from just below ice water temperature down to liquid nitrogen temperature. They're wrapped in the sleeping bag and tied to a backboard. And the patient in the sleeping bag goes in one of these cryostats with their head down. I think I'm pretty well responsible for everything that happens here, doing email and answering queries and doing research. Our facility manager, and he maintains the cryostats. He does the liquid nitrogen filling. He's very, very familiar with operations, and he still knows things about the building that I don't know. I've been working here for over 25 years. I used to live across town, and it was a, about 30 miles, about an hour drive. So then I figured well, it would be more convenient, and it'd be more practical just to stay here. So I stay right here 24 hours a day, five days a week, and then I just go home on weekends. Got a little break room up there, and that's where I sleep. I'm certainly planning to do this myself. I've devoted my life to this. I wouldn't be doing this if, I, if it wasn't something I believed in or wanted to do. When you're younger, you feel good and stuff. You don't think about dying or anything like that. A friend of mine actually died the year before I became signed up. And he was older than me, but I didn't think he was old enough to die. That gets you thinking. This is how they're built. The more simple you can keep something, the less problems you're going to have. The storage facilities are set and they're fully functional. These cylinders are extremely efficient, so the big focus is on preparing our patients, getting them here in the best condition as you can. And I make myself available 24-7. This is the business we're in. It's like Russian roulette or something. You never know when I'm going to have to drop everything else and deal with the patient. I don't really feel like a, I have my own life in that sense. In my case, if cryonics works, I won't have a problem with not knowing people because uh, I know more cryonics people than any other cryonists in the world. So I'll, I'll know a lot of people if this works. To begin with, there are no guarantees at all. No guarantees it'll work at all for anybody. We don't promise anybody he's going to go to sleep and wake up a moment later and uh, be young and healthy again. It may never happen. I'm Robert Attenshire. I'm the principal founder of the cryonics movement. Cryonics, per se, is, uh, from some points of view, very simple. You have yourself frozen, interrupt the dying process before it's gone too far, and when technology advances sufficiently, you restore the patient. Nothing is for sure, but uh, you have a chance. I think it's a good chance.
This is our very first patient, which is Robert Edinger's mother. The second patient was, uh, was Robert Edinger's first wife. This is uh, Robert Edinger's second wife. He uh, had a funeral director standing by when she had her final stroke. It was a very emotional experience for him. Worst day of his life, he says. <laughs> Everything in life can be approached as scientific questions. Well, my background is as a uh, college teacher of physics and math. So from that point of view, I'm not a scientist in the sense that I ever earned a living by doing scientific research. But science isn't only about technology or research in the laboratory. It's simply to do your best with your mind. No holds barred. This idea, it had been around for a long time, thousands of years. Well, since I was a boy, I just assumed that before I had died a natural death, that we would understand how to control the aging process and prevent it or reverse it. But it didn't happen. We have progressed much less than I originally hoped, much less than I originally thought possible in this time span. I'll be a patient, of course, one of these, uh, one of these years, uh, not too far in the future, in all probability. There are a lot of people who seem to think that what we're doing is sacrilegious. There's a great deal of uh, contempt for what we do. A lot of people, they just don't get it. There's like there's um, some 11th commandment in the Bible that says, thou shalt not freeze. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody's in a hurry to get there. We try to make it clear to people that what we're doing is not in conflict with religion. We're just trying to extend life. Nobody's forcing you. You can always jump into the grave, you know. <laughs> the worms will still be waiting there. <laughs> How many patients have you prepared? Everyone. <laughs> this is number 100. I'm not talking about living forever. I'm talking about waking up tomorrow. When people say they don't want to extend their lives, they're talking without thinking. There are very few people who don't want to wake up tomorrow. There. But this baby's heavy, so. Yeah. I will take some dry ice out to light that up. I don't want to see what's under the top, how much dry ice there is. I think there's got to be a lot. Oh, yeah. Of that, we can't lift them out of here. We got to slide them out of here, and we'll have to turn this on its side okay. to slide them out. We should be able to get that out. Are you right there? Um, put yours down. And if you can grab that end, we'll just pick them up and set them on there. If there's a couple of decent sized slabs of dry ice, we can just mm -hmm. set on his head while we're wrapping them up to keep it cool. Yeah. Worry about making sure he doesn't slide off. This is the 99th patient, or the 100th patient. Number one, number one.
is a straight freeze. Straight freeze means they get no perfusion, they're frozen with their blood in them. Um, it's certainly not ideal, but a lot of people think it's better than nothing. If you want to talk about revival of your physical body, no spiritual or anything like that, no religion, it's your only hope, even though it might be swim, so. Many people cannot be comfortable living with uncertainty. They would rather live with a lie. They would rather accept what they've been taught. They'd rather accept authority and for that matter, accept death. But the mark of maturity is serenity in the face of uncertainty. If you aren't frozen, if you're buried or cremated, then you're done, you're gone. If they think about it enough, they'll say, well, I'll take that chance. And uh, that's what I have to sell.